So it, 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 this sonata also ends in, without a catharsis in, in, in tragedy. And nothing could be more different than the final sonata in this program, Opus 28, which, which is called the Pastoral Sonata. It's also not a name given by Beethoven, but in this case, it can be excused. <laughs> because when we think of the Pastoral Symphony, we see many similarities. The Pastoral Symphony is Beethoven's own name, but even there he says, mehr Empfindung als Tonmalerei, so more emotion than tone painting. Uh, but if we think of these timpani strokes in the beginning of, of this piece, he, oh. later we have So, like in the violin concerto, I, I hear the, the timpani starting this wonderful sonata. When we complained, or Hans von Bülow complained about the E flat sonata being four square, this so you one. Can see if Beethoven wanted to write not four square melodies but a ten bar phrase, he, he could do it very well. So this is a ten bar phrase. One. phrase of this sonata. Uh, so we have 10, 10, 8, 8, 4. So it's not, not really four square. Now comes the transition towards the second subject. Four voices, as clear like a string quartet. Now, variation. Far from the tonic, we, we have on the, on the tonic the dominant and the dominant of the dominant. Yeah. Comes the second subject. sharp major. We are incredibly far from, if, we, if I go in, in steps of fifth, then we are D. We are six steps removed. And with this um, back and forth, we have again this sonata, as far as the form is concerned, is less revolutionary than its predecessors, but its sound world is, is revolutionary because to me this is all, this sounds ex incredibly like Schubert. Uh, no? With, with all 
these inner voices like, like a murmuring forest again. And again, we are at least now, at last we have arrived on the dominant. Beethoven always wanted the piano to sing. It's not a percussive instrument. And he, what we, we really have to try to, to make it sing and, and speak. And... The, the, the closing theme, which is again quite appropriate in a pastoral sonata because it's like bird song. You can imagine an oboe playing this theme. And then he orchestrates it with, with horns. Position. Now I go into the development section. And it's, this, it's the subdominant which starts the development. Before he finishes the theme, he starts a counterpoint in the left hand. Composition method of, of foreshortening. He uses smaller and smaller sections of the theme. First, he uses four bars, then only two, and then just one motif. One motif, the three notes, tim, ta ta tam, ta ta tam, in, in its proper form and also the inversion. And all this on a very remote key of F sharp major. stops on the, he ran out of notes again this is all written in one pedal and there's a fermata and then suddenly sound like the just a fragment again I always quote Edwin Fisher because I like him so much. He says it's like a, in a circle of grown-ups who are having a 
serious discussion and suddenly this little child just drops his head in through the door and he is frightened at what at this great silence. Seventh, after which we can come back to the, this wonderful allegro. Uh, the rest is fairly straightforward. Just the end is very beautiful like of this movement. Very simple. Um, you always, he always repeats this, the timpani. And now comes a very melancholy movement in D minor. Opus 28 is, it con consists of four movements. Uh, first movement was in sonata form and now comes a lead form, a song form, an ABA structure. It has again, when I said the, that the C-sharp minor sonata had to play, be played in, in pedal. You remember this sound? Now comes a movement which should really be played without pedal, because it has a, left, a bass ostinato, sempre staccato. And above that, we have a, something of a combination of a chorale and a march. Two together give a wonderful picture, but they have to be very independent, and the pedal is really to be avoided here. Crescendo subito. example, if I use the pedal, we would get something like this. It's terrible. I mean, you don't get a picture. You have to have clarity. And then, just in the second part, of this theme, you can use a little pedal. All these diminished seven scores dissonant. this music is not tragic but but melancholy now the middle section is so much more cheerful and and very happy music you have again pastoral elements of bird song horns first and then answered by the flute The 
German language, if you say Nachtigall, which is nightingale, I think that gives the right expression if you say Nachtigall, Nachtigall. After this major episode, the, the minor music returns. And then again, Beethoven's wonderful variation technique. From, this is the only time he writes legato in the bass. The of this movement is, is quite astonishing. The Nachtigall comes back, but not so happy anymore. So it's a wonderful sonority. You have you have the lowest register of the keyboard and, and the highest. I mean, you must imagine in, on a Beethoven keyboard, you didn't have all these unnecessary octaves. <laughs> and so you have the, the sensation of, of, of the earth and, and the heavens. Uh, after that, back to earth, it com comes a very humorous scherzo with very simple means. Like in a string quartet, the four instruments, first violin, second violin, viola, cello, and then tonic, subdominant, dominant, tonic. So it's very simple. Then a fifth above. It's very important that the two quavers have a slur and then they are separated from the crotchet. So he, one has to exaggerate that little gap. Then second part. He, humorous, almost a cheeky movement. Then the trio is even funnier because we have a very simple little dance. And then the second phrase. So one goes to, to B minor, one goes to D major. And then he has four different ways to harmonize this. one so it's very simple means but he shows us four different ways to to harmonize a simple motif then da capo scherzo finale allegro ma non troppo and, and again we have the the prove that this is a pastoral sonata because this is bagpipe music. It has this Scottish drone. And 
but a beautiful melody. Also, this, this, this swinging 6-8 time, when you think of the pastoral symphonies, also in 6-8. comes a transition second subject variation Orchestra playing. And the return of the rondo. Um, we have a beautiful development section which is again very Bachian to me and also four shadows already the late Beethoven. Let me play it for you. Pastoral, very simple music, you have something so intricately polyphonic like this. So it's very beautiful, all this chromaticism. So after that, we have the final return of the theme and um, the second and closing subjects in the tonic. Uh, before Beethoven closes this wonderful sonata with a very brilliant coda, which is very difficult to play, uh, Charles Rosen says this is just to, to annoy the amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> because otherwise it would be quite possible. But <laughs> then it gets very difficult. So let's just finish that. Thank you. 